EXP Realty Revenue Share Properly Explained. Hey guys, it's Mike Gerard. What I want to do in this video is help you properly understand EXP's compensation plan with revenue share. Now I'm gonna be the first to tell you that not only do most people outside of EXP not properly understand the entirety of the revenue share, but most people at the company don't even properly understand everything you need to know about revenue share. So what I'm going to do is I'm first gonna give you a proper explanation about revenue share. Number two, I'm also going to talk to you about the nuances. There's two specific nuances that most people don't know about the revenue share, and that is actually why I came to the company. So stay tuned for that, and we're gonna get straight into it. So I'm gonna give you the most in-depth, thorough example and breakdown with exact demonstrations using real numbers of how to properly understand revenue share. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlay on the screen right here, and it's gonna show you the actual revenue share photo. Now, I urge you to click the link in the description, which will allow you to download this photo, and that's gonna allow you to follow along because I know that sometimes these numbers are a little bit small. So download that, follow it along. And the next thing that I just wanna say before we get started is that I also have a link in the pinned comment and the description in order to book a private one-on-one -on -one call with me. I cannot stress how important it is to choose the right sponsor at eXp when you're looking to join the company. So if you want to know what we're doing differently than any other group of the company, including all of my social media training, some of the insane mastermind calls we do four times a week, as well as how we built a unique system to help you scale your business, again, feel free to book a private one-on-one, -on -one, one hour call with myself. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. So here is eXp revenue share. Now you can see that we have a seven tier compensation plan modeled after Keller Williams, but the difference is, is that we share revenue before expenses, they share profit after expenses. It's an absolutely massive difference. So here's how we're gonna break this down. We've got our seven tier structure. You've got something called expansion share. You've got exponential share. And then you've got what's called FLQA or frontline qualifying agents. Now, again, this seems confusing and this is why you really, really need to understand this if you want to thrive at this company and build true wealth. And most don't because most only focus on exponential share and most don't even understand FLQA. So let me break this down for you. I'm going to give you an exact example. So put yourself in these shoes. Let's say that you came to the company, you would be up here. So this would be you. Okay. And now let's say that you brought in John and John is one of your friends. He decides to part partner with you. Here's how this is going to work. So if we take a $10,000 commission, this is for easy numbers, $10,000 commission, John closes that deal. Okay. 80, 20 split at EXP. So 80% or $8,000 will go to John 20% or $2,000 would go to EXP. Now out of EXP's commission, not out of John's out of the money that goes to the company out of the $2,000, you would receive what you can see here is three and a half percent of that commission, which would be $350. And that would go to you for helping bring John into the company. Okay. Now I'm going to get this in more detail. So let's use a second example over here, which is, let's say that Sarah came into the company. Okay. We're going to erase this to just make it simple. So let's say that Sarah comes into the company. John brings in Sarah. Okay. Sarah closes a $10,000 commission, 80, 20, 80% or 8,000 goes to Sarah, 20% or 2,000 goes to EXP. Now this is where things get a little bit different, okay? Because Sarah is on John's first tier, Sarah is on your second tier. So let me break down the flow of money here. Let's see how this works. So Sarah would close this amount of money. And then you can see here out of the 20% that goes to EXP, not out of Sarah's commission out of the 20% that goes to EXP second tier, this is a combined total potentially of 3.8% plus 0.2%, which is 4%, just $400 would go to you. And because she's on John's first tier, again, 3.5% or $350 would go 
to John. So this goes seven tiers deep. That is a bit of an understanding of the first two tiers and then it goes down. Now, here is the big difference that most people do not understand. And this is why it's incredibly important to look at this. Now that comes down to the difference between an FLA and an FLQA, which is this over here that most people do not properly understand. And this is why it's incredibly important. So let's look at the difference between a FLA and an FLQA, a frontline agent, a frontline qualifying agent. So a frontline agent is anybody that you sponsor. Now, what is a frontline qualifying agent? A frontline qualifying agent is anybody that you sponsor that has closed a transaction within the last six months. So one deal in the last six months. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So let's look at this zero to four, five to nine, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, so on and so forth. So let me break this down for you because this is important. So here's how this works. Okay. You can see here zero to four. That means no matter how many agents, whether it be one, 10, 100, 1000, a million, no matter how many agents you personally bring into EXP, you will always get three and a half percent of the GCI from EXP's money every single time that somebody that you have brought into the company closes a transaction. But now let's look at the second tier because you can see five to nine. So let me break this down for you. Let's use again a $10,000 commission for example, just for very easy numbers. And let's say that you have FLQAs, you only have one, two, three, or four FLQAs and somebody on your second tier closes a transaction, okay? So we're looking at the second tier. You've got zero to four agents on your first tier that have closed a transaction within the last six months, zero to four. If somebody on your second tier closes a transaction and you only have zero to four agents on your first tier that have closed a transaction within the last six months, that means that you're not going to get 4%, you're only going to get the expansion share which means that on a $10,000 commission, you would only get 0.2%, which is $20 from this agent on your second tier. If you only have zero to four. Now let's go ahead and say that you've got the fifth frontline qualifying agent on your first tier. So you finally have five people that have closed a transaction within the last six months. That now is going to allow you on a $10,000 commission to get the summation of both of these, which is 4%, which means it's $400. This is a massive difference. $20 versus $400 in the revenue share. And again, same goes with the next tier. If somebody on your third tier closes a transaction and you only have less than 10 people, frontline qualifying agents, you only get 0.1%. But again, once you get that 10th person, 10 to 14, you will get the summation of these two, which is 2.5%. Now, let me talk to you about the two nuances about the revenue share, which is why I actually came to the company. The first one being is that it's an exit strategy, and this is absolutely incredible. So let's look at the current brokerage you're at if you're not at EXP. If you decide that in 10 years from now, you want to retire, you never wanna close a deal again for the rest of your life, your income is going to go to zero after 10, 20, 30 years of hard work every single week, your income the day you decide to leave the business is gonna go to zero, which is not very good and not a good appreciation of the hard work you put into that brokerage. Let's look at eXp. In 10 years from now, if you wanna stop closing deals and all you want to do is maintain your license, as long as you maintain your license, you retain your revenue share. So if you've got, like many of my business partners, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, $100,000 per month in revenue share coming in in 10 years from now, and you decide you never wanna close another deal for the rest of your life and solely maintain your license as active with EXP, you retain that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, $100,000 per month in revenue share as long as you hold your active license. It's a massive exit strategy. Now, the second thing is that it's willable. So let's say, unfortunately, in five years from now, you pass away and you've got $27,000 a month coming in in revenue share. Well, 
your spouse or somebody in your will can get their real estate license within an 18 month window and inherit your revenue share. They never have to close a deal. They will inherit your revenue share. And again, that is going to provide a safe haven for your family so that in the event of something unforeseen happening, you've got your family covered, which is probably the most important thing in your life, which no other brokerage does for you. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of the revenue share chart, because again, it's really important to understand the difference between expansion share, exponential share, and this is the big one, is properly understanding what an FLQA is and understanding how this fits because this incentivizes growth within the company and it incentivizes you to push as well to help agents close more transactions. So again, if you wanna book a private call, click the link in the description, click the pinned comment. I'd love to chat with you and show you how this has changed my life as well as so many other agents' lives. So thanks so much for tuning in. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time.